Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be diving into some research that's exposed a pretty severe vulnerability that's really widespread. The research comes from Cyber News. They conducted some wide-scale domain and IP scanning and discovered nearly 2 million, 1.93 million to be exact, dot .git directories that were publicly accessible to anyone remotely. So we'll dive into exactly what .git folders are or .git directories. We'll take a look at why these are so sensitive and really the causes behind why these are being leaked out. So firstly, what is a .git directory? So if you are familiar with Git, you'll probably be familiar with this folder that is created. Every time you initiate a new Git repository, it will automatically generate a .git directory. In this directory isn't just your latest code or your latest version, it's all the metadata and all the history of a project ever. So if you started a project three years ago, the code that you wrote then is inside this .git directory. That's what makes it so sensitive because while we all know that we can commit some sensitive information like API keys or maybe test data, and whilst it never should be in a Git directory or Git repository, well, it often ends up in there. Now, Cyber News didn't scan these directories for sensitive information like secrets. There's so many of them that were found that this would have been probably a huge task, but they did scan and look at the configuration files of these. And they found that 6%, so that's more than 100,000, 6% of these exposed Git directories had the credentials to deploy their applications publicly. So let me say that again, very slowly. More than 6% of the millions of exposed Git repositories had the full credentials to be able to publish applications in production immediately within the Git directory. So their production credentials were exposed publicly to anyone that bothered to look for them. This research isn't actually uh, alone by itself. Exposed Git directories is a known vulnerability that attackers exploit. I did a complete rundown from a group called Sakura Samurai that hacked into the Indian government. And one of their um, main attack paths was to scan IP addresses to find exposed dot get directories. And they did. Now there's a full breakdown to that attack. I even go through the tools that they used to be able to do that and to scan it. And in that case, the Git directories did contain additional secrets that gave them access to servers and networks. And they also contained lots of sensitive information like police reports. So attackers are aware of this and are actively exploiting it. Other security reaches have also conducted smaller scale research projects into exposed dot .git directories. So one blogger did a study of over 2.6 million domains of which they were able to find over a thousand exposed dot .git directories and they found lots of sensitive information within them. Now they didn't do deep analysis scans into all the history to uncover all different types of secrets, but they did uncover quite a lot just in top level enumeration. So for example, they found over 200 exposed .env files and they found 135 database username and passwords and 48 user accounts with password, 48 email and user combination passwords. So, so now if we kind of take this small level findings and we extrapolate it out to the larger scale of cyber users research, and we can see that there's huge amounts of sensitive information available uh, out there publicly for anyone to access. So if you understand now what a .git directory is, and you understand that it's sensitive, a question that you might have is how on earth does it end up publicly available uh, on a server somewhere. There's lots of ways that this could happen. So there's not one answer for all these million occurrences, but essentially uh, this can happen usually in a manual deployment configuration error. So perhaps you're hosting a static website within an Amazon S3 bucket, and instead of uploading the latest version, you've just kind of copied everything within your directory, including the .git folder. 
and you've uploaded it all. You know, this is also true if you're using like an FTP server, an old school way of kind of uploading uh, data, then, you know, you're just basically grabbing everything and publishing on there. Your website's publicly available, so then all your folders and directories and everything that makes it run is, and your .git folder is too. So this is a pretty archaic way of deploying in this modern era, but it still happens, and it's one way a .git directory could definitely be exposed. Another way that this potentially could be exposed is if you're uh, trying to host your own version of Git, or you're trying to host your own Git server, and this has been misconfigured that has allowed the remote access and download of these .git folders. So what is the actual exploit here? How does someone find, uh, reconstruct and scan .git directories in a malicious way? Well, the first step is to ruminate on the domains or IP addresses to be able to find as many active ports and as many active domains as you can. There's lots of tools to be able to do, such as a mass, which is from OWASP, which conducts in-depth attack surface mapping and asset discovery. You could use other tools like DIR search, directory search, which is a web pass scanner. Again, this is an open source project. So there's plenty of ways that will allow you to map out a domain's infrastructure to be able to discover the widest perimeter possible. From there, you can manually search for .git folders fairly easily or in an automated way with a script, but there's tools that will help you do this as well. For instance, there's a tool called Git Jacker, which allows you to really find Git repositories that have been leaked and will also help you reconstruct them into the latest versions or a version of various history. So the sophistication level to be able to conduct this kind of exploit is very, very low. There's basically automated tools that are gonna help you be able to do this 100% of the way. Once you've downloaded that Git directory, you can then search that for sensitive information. For instance, you can use other open source tools or you could use commercial secret detection tools like ggshield to scan that. Now, of course, you shouldn't use this information for nefarious activities, but I think it's important to outline that this is an easy attack vector for hackers. So therefore, it's super important that we all are aware of it and don't provide them any low-hanging fruit to access our infrastructure, our systems, or our data. So how do we mitigate this problem? Step one is to make sure that the Git directories contain as little sensitive information as possible. Yes, of course, we don't want to expose these, but even if they are exposed, they shouldn't pose a threat. Making sure they don't contain secrets, credentials, especially deployment credentials or anything else within the entire history. That is step one, because then if a misconfiguration does happen, then your whole security protocols haven't fallen apart. The next step is to obviously ensure that the Git directories don't actually make it to the web and aren't publicly accessible. This means defensing your deployment process. There shouldn't be a deployment that enables your Git directory to be exposed. It has no value to the running of your website. It only contains historic and metadata about the version control. There's no reason for this to be publicly accessible on your web server. Now, the last step should be a redundant step, but that's what we achieve. That's what we're aiming for in security, redundancy. And that is to make sure that any Git directories aren't publicly accessible if they do make it through our deployment checks and if they do contain sensitive information, we want to block it from being remotely accessible. So we want to make sure that it's not being indexed and that it's not publicly accessible. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. We have plenty more content like that. And remember, good code is secure code.